Hey everyone, I'm Amanda, the Red Witch Bitch, and today I want to go over uh, something kind of important. It doesn't get a whole lot of attention, but I want to fix that. Today I want to go over imposter spirits, trickster entities, vetting, boundaries, and contracts. All of this is supposed to keep you safe and informed within deity work and all of your craft, so let's get into it and let's get started. A lot of times within spirit work and deity work, you'll often find yourself being in contact with trickster spirits. This is kind of a bastardization of what it should be called. Let me explain. There's a difference between imposter spirits and trickster entities. Calling an imposter a trickster is not quite the same thing. Yes, they do play tricks on you, but these spirits are trying to make you think that they are a different being than they actually are. They are imposters. Trickster entities are deities, demons, and whatever else, or whoever else, that play tricks for fun. Or mean it in a lighthearted kind of way. Imposter spirits are only interested in sowing discord and tricking you and causing chaos in people's lives, sometimes staying for days, weeks, months, years, anything like that. Or just staying until they are banished. These tricks played by the imposter spirits can be damaging emotionally, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, did I say emotionally twice? It's damaging in every single way, including physically. They can physically trick you or trick you into doing something that harms your physical body. It's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of gross shit. These spirits don't want to be your friend. They just want to do shitty things because they're bored. They're bored spirits. The afterlife can get boring if you have no place to go. Sometimes spirits just get trapped or stuck and they're like, what am I gonna do for the next millennia? Oh, I'm gonna play tricks on this dumb little human. They think I'm just the regular house spirit, or maybe I am the regular house spirit and they wanna get into deity work. I'm gonna trick them into thinking that I'm Loki and I see Loki on the TV all the time. So maybe I can just trick them into thinking I'm a deity. I doubt that their plans are as dramatic as that, but that's just what goes through my head, you know? It may be much simpler. It may be more complex. I don't know. I don't know the business of spirits. If I should return to the topic, let's go on to trickster entities. So if imposter spirits should just trick you, then what are trickster entities, right? They should do the same thing, yeah? Not exactly. Tricksters often refer more to gods, goddesses, and entities of other sorts. They like to play harmless tricks or, you know, just tricks for fun to teach you lessons. These lessons are never really damaging in any emotional, physical, mental, psychological, or spiritual sense. These gods, goddesses include, but are not limited to Aphrodite. Aphrodite is a huge trickster goddess. It's not very well known, but she is trust. Just trust me. Ask any deity practitioner, they will tell you. There's also Hermes and Loki, Odin, Dionysus, Lord Set, Sometimes Zeus, uh, he, Zeus does like to play his fair share of tricks. Asmodeus, I have heard Gabriel as well. They play tricks because it's part of their personality. It's part of their character. They may play tricks to teach you a lesson, to teach you different things. How to stand up to them so you can stand up to people in your waking life and just like out in your physical world and shit. Or maybe it's just, you know, to have fun. There's a lot of different reasons why deities would want to play tricks. Sometimes they want attention. Sometimes they just want to be fun. Sometimes it's for other reasons. Each deity has their own agenda and not every agenda is going to be the same with every practitioner. Now that that is separated, let's go back into imposter spirits. Imposter spirits can be random people spirits who just got bored. There won't be just like a set type of spirit. There's not just one individual set type of trickster entity. It is not its own categorization of spirit. It is a quality. It is a character trait of a spirit or an entity. It is not the entity name as a whole. They may trick you into thinking that they are your spirit guide or a deity that you're trying to reach out to, sometimes even pretending to be one of your ancestors. They may trick you because you might be more susceptible to being tricked, or maybe because your protections aren't working as well as you thought they were. This is not to say that Oh, if you're not protected enough, or if you're susceptible, if you're not strong-willed, then, you, then you're gonna get tricked. No, it happens to everyone. It happened to me too, like a couple years ago. I had some entities in my space that told me they were my spirit guides, uh, and some of them were my spirit guides who were just tricking me and shit. Like, like I said, it's a quality, it's not the type of spirit. There are all these imposter entities that were trying to trick me and leading me astray and fucking up my life. After they were banished and taken care of, everything smoothed out. So it happens to the best of us. It happens to the worst of us. It happens to everyone. So if you were tricked by an imposter entity, 
You did nothing wrong. As long as you take care of the problem, you're peachy keen. This is why vetting is crucial to deity work and spirit work and everything. Oftentimes we can't see the deity or entity that we're trying to interact with. We can't properly hear them. We can just rely on divination because maybe our clear senses aren't developed enough. Maybe we just don't have that sight or that hearing in order to differentiate between spirits and entities. Vetting is like caller ID for the spiritual world. And it can be, you know, kind of like playing 20 questions with your deities. You don't have to ask 20 questions, but it's like the game. This can confirm their identity and allows you to make sure that you know who you're talking to and that they really are who they say they are. Now, any entity or deity or demon or anything, anyone, if they say that they don't want to answer your questions with vetting, it is not that deity immediately. Why do I know this? Because any deity, demon, angel, entity, anybody will answer your questions to make you feel safe. Even after working with them for a while, you feel this unfamiliar presence around you, you can still ask them to confirm their identity with a few questions and a pendulum. They're not going to get mad at you for wanting to be sure that you are safe. Like I said in a previous video, you have to be sane and you have to be safe in order to practice deity work or entity work of any kind. These entities will not get mad at you for wanting to make sure that you are okay. What questions do you ask them? You ask them things from their mythology or in demons cases, the Goetia, the Ars Goetia. Ask them different questions about their appearance or their mythology. Ask them right and wrong questions. Ask them questions that you know are incorrect so you can ask them and see that their answer is in fact no. You can just ask them anywhere from three to five questions, sometimes seven, just one at a time and pause in between so you can get a clear answer and just don't go overboard. Now you don't have to do this every single time that you want to interact with this deity. It's kind of overkill. Now let's go over boundaries and how to keep yourself safe within vetting and deity work and entity work and all of that shit. Boundaries are a very, 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 very important part of deity work. Like I said, they keep you safe. Spirits that you work with, whether they are spirit guides, ancestors, deities, angels, demons, anything, should never cross your boundaries or knowingly do things that make you uncomfortable. Now, sometimes they might not be aware of what makes you uncomfortable and they might fuck up because, you know, even spirits and deities and entities and everybody can fuck up. Now, these boundaries and list of contracts and shit doesn't have to be an actual contract. It can be a list of house rules. These house rules are like terms and conditions for existing in your space, and they must be respected by all entities within your space. With me, I write down, you should not trick me under any circumstances that is harmful to my health, mental health, and well-being. Do not lie to me under any circumstances. Do not play tricks on my loved ones. Do not fuck with my animals. Loki has his own rule, don't set off a fire alarm because it scares the shit out of my cat. If you get uncomfortable with deities touching you and physically like interacting with you, make that a boundary too. Be like, yo, I need my personal space. I would prefer you not touch me. They don't have to touch you. They'll be fine with that. I even have little agreements within this house rules contract thing for certain deities so that whenever I'm doing something around the house, it is preset that whatever I am doing is an offering for that deity. So taking care of my plants, that's for Kerununos. Cleaning the house, just vacuuming, straightening things up, that's for Hestia. Studying is, or researching is for Lucifer and studying or writing is for Prince Stolas. You can write all these things down on a piece of paper. Just as many pieces of paper as you want. Usually I just take one piece of paper because I don't have all that many house rules, just like don't wake me up, no deity messages past 9 to 10 p.m., don't scare me, things like that. Easy stuff. Easy stuff that you could expect from random, real house guests. Don't pop out behind a corner. Don't show up unannounced. Like, don't bring friends that I haven't approved of first. Things like that. Things that, like, imagine your friends are coming over. Give them the house rules that you would your friends, you know? They want you to set boundaries with them. This is, that is a huge misconception about deities. Oh, you can't tell a deity what to do. No, this is a agreement that you have with that deity. The deity wants to work with you. They wanna make sure that you are safe and that you feel okay enough to work with them. So they're going to abide by any boundaries that you set because if you are not able to set boundaries with deities, you cannot expect yourself to set boundaries with people in your walking life, just on the street, parents, friends, ex-boyfriends, anything. It teaches you to be more independent and teaches you not to take shit. Now, one way to ask them to agree to things is, you know, just 
reading them out loud or asking them to read over it and asking them, does this look okay? Is this, does this seem fine to you? Do these seem like reasonable asks? I do this with a pendulum. I will just write out my contract and I'll say, okay, Lucifer, does, do these seem like reasonable asks of you? And he'll say yes. So I ask him again, can I sign your name at the bottom of this if you agree to this house rules contract? And you, he'll say, yeah. Sign his name at the bottom. Do this for all of my other deities because I've never had a deity say, mm, no, I'm not going to agree to any of this. Sometimes I have had deities be like, I don't know about this one or this number. If, if you get a no, then ask them which one they have a problem with and, you know, alter it a little bit for them because they're not going to want to be confined and constricted, but they do want you to feel safe. So find that healthy balance between, you know, go balls to the wall and I need my own sanity right there in the middle. That's the sweet spot. <laughs> you can choose to banish your space and protect your space and build back up your wards before you make this house rules contract so that you can make sure that there are no bad or negative entities in your space. Another thing I will suggest is um, it doesn't matter if you work with them or not, but you can ask your master guide, your spirit guides to be like, all right, here's the contract. Can you put this in my wards and make a sign essentially in my wards so that all entities coming into my space have to agree to this contract and these house rules before they are allowed entry into my space. And you know, your master guide will be like, absolutely. Yes, let's do it. And you can ask them to enforce those rules. If a spirit, breaks that contract or a spirit randomly comes in here, you know, is nice for a while and then starts fucking shit up, your master guide or spirit guides or whatever deities can yeet that spirit out of your space for breaking those contracts. They want to keep you safe. They want to keep you sane. If you are safe and sane, you are okay. If you want some ideas for these deity contracts and house rules, take a look into the discord, the archive of the cobalt soul. There we have all sorts of shit on deity work and even some things on deity contracts and boundaries and agreements and shit. It's a free public online discord grimoire filled to the brim with witchy and occult and arcane information. So you can find everything that your little black witchy heart desires there. The link for the archive of the Cobalt Soul discord is going to be down in the description below. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you have any suggestions for future content, let me know there too. If there's anything that you want to know or you want to learn about, absolutely let me know and I will see what I can do for you and make a video here. So until next time, I will see you later. Have fun and happy witching.